I received an email a few days ago from a reader who had a question about what path he might want to take in life, and he had some questions about what he should do, associated things like that. So I wanted to read pieces of his email and then talk a little bit about his questions. He says, I'm spurred into writing to you now. I'm in my early 20s and I have a traditional outlook in many respects, such as on marriage. Marrying and having children is something I want. I have friends perhaps a decade older than me and they are living examples of what I don't want my life to turn out like. Recently, I've become very close to, with a Christian girl. We have very strong feelings for each other and are basically living on the cusp of forming a relationship. The problem I have is that I feel inadequate in comparison to the lofty ideals I have of what a man should be like. I still feel I am a product of flawed modernity. While she is assertive and not at all naive, she has led a rather conservative life. I, am, I have not necessarily. I worry perhaps I am too inclined towards licentiousness rather than commitment and healthy love. I know, too, that to enter into this relationship will require me to mature very quickly. This won't just be a stopgap relationship. It'll be one which will probably result in marriage and children in under five years. I need to get my house in order and get myself ready for this undertaking and dispel with any traces of this quintessentially modern 20 is the new, 30 is the new 20 bullshit which, I st which still festers in me. For this, I want to know what can I do. Studying the lives of great men may be a good place to start. Perhaps the Stoics have some wisdom on relationships would apply, uh, that could apply to this dilemma I am in. Any comments, questions, suggestions, blah, 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 blah. Okay. All right. Well, you know, one of the things that I, you have to do when you're someone in my position, you have to kind of decode when people send you emails, ask you questions. You have to kind of decode what the language that they're using from the actual intent of what they're asking about. And this guy is obviously an, obviously an educated kid. He's using some uh, well-written sentences, some very, uh, you know, uh, significant vocabulary there, quint uh, licentiousness and all this other stuff. Okay, so this, this guy is a thinking individual, all right? But really what he's getting at is he's getting in the middle of a relationship. He's scared and he doesn't know what to do. He's kind of concerned. He feels like he's a little bit overwhelmed. He feels like life is coming at him very fast and he doesn't really know he feel he feels like in some ways that he needs to put the brakes on. Okay, that's really what this guy is getting at. He feels overwhelmed. He senses what's coming at him down the road. He's getting involved with a girl who wants uh, something out of life and this and that and the other thing. And he feels like, oh my God, what, what's going on? What's going on? All right. Well, first of all, this guy needs to get his mind right. He needs to get his mind right. There's a few certain principles that this guy needs to 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 wrap his mind around. All right. And the first thing is in life, you need to understand you're never going to be ready for any big step in life. You're never going to be ready. There is no rule book. There is no manual. There is no formula. There is no, I'm ready and I, now I've got myself in order. I'm ready to go. You're never going to be ready for the big changes, the big decisions, the big uh, uh, boulders that roll down the hill at you in life. There are young guys in their 20s. There are young guys in their 20s who are put in command of platoons and are sent out into the field to lead a platoon of, of, uh, of men. And they, they, uh, they're right out of college. And they know very little. And they have to figure their way out. They have to find their way into uh, a comfort zone of leadership where they're accepted by their men. And they are uh, able to, to perform under pressure. There are young lawyers who have to go and perform jury trials in front of uh, 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 scolding, scolding, scowling juries and have to advocate for their clients uh, under real duress. Okay, there are there are people in all walks of life who have to enter into situations of extreme adversity, and they don't have any rule book or preparation manual for that. There is no rule book, so get rid of this rule book manual, this preparation manual. You're never fully going to be ready. What you have to focus on is your own development, your own mind, your own thoughts, your own process. You have to focus on being the very best version of yourself that you can be in mind, in body, and soul. So that when these challenges come at you, you will automatically, you know, the 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 years of effort the years of 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 study of application of stress will will help you solve the problems that you find yourself in okay so 
you have to just accept the fact that you're young. You're in your early 20s. You're not going to know all the answers. You're not going to know jack shit. All right. And the reality is no amount of talking from me or from anybody else is really going to prepare someone to get motivated, to get their mind right. What's really going to be the 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 catalyst for that is going to be some sort of crisis. If you really look at people that have undergone real shifts and real changes in their lives, they've had to undergo some sort of severe crisis. They've had some sort of disaster or collapse or extreme paradigm shift or stress in their lives where they've hit rock bottom and then all of a sudden they've had to make changes. It comes out of necessity. It comes out of necessity. And this touches on something that I mentioned a little a few days ago on Twitter that I think in many ways guys have too many options. There's too many options out there. There's too many options. There's too many ways for you to talk your way out of what you need to do. There's just too many escape routes. And I use the example of the book Moby Dick. There's a scene in there. It's called Chowder, I think. One of the chapters is, is entitled Chowder. When these whalers were getting ready to head out on their, their two-year whaling cruise, the the proprietor of the inn, the spout in, would say, clam or cod, clam or cod. You have two options, clam chowder or cod chowder. That's it. That's the only thing they serve. Clam chowder, cod chowder. You don't get a fucking list of of, of 20 men, things on a menu to choose from. This is 18, 1840s. You get two choices, clam chowder or cod chowder. And you should be goddamn happy to get that. Be happy to get that. Because most people get nothing. So the point is, in many ways, I think too many guys have too many choices. And the more choices you have, the more reasons you have to talk your way out, your talk, to talk yourself out of doing what you have to do. The more choices you have, the more potential excuses you have. And this is the reality. This is the reality that I see. So what this guy is really getting at in his question is, I feel overwhelmed. Help me, I feel overwhelmed. Help me, I feel overwhelmed. Well, let me tell you, brother, you're going to feel overwhelmed at every phase in your life. You're going to feel overwhelmed in your 20s. You're going to feel overwhelmed in your 30s. You're going to feel overwhelmed in your 40s. You're going to feel overwhelmed in your 50s. It doesn't get any easier. The only way it gets easier is if you start to build up that dialogue with yourself, if you start to develop that correct mental state that mental state of of i cannot be defeated of i will not let anything defeat me i will handle whatever life throws at me i will handle whatever life throws at me that's the that's the ethic you need to you need to imbue in yourself and why do you think i spend so much time writing these books these character studies about the great men of history, about paragons of virtue, paragons of character. Why do you think I've been spending all these years doing this? You think that I do this for my fucking health? It's because if you know what other men went through, if you can help, if you can see the world uh, from the perspective of, of other men, of, of how they endured their struggles, their hardships, it'll help you start to build up those skills to do that for yourself. I can only teach you what I know. I can only teach you what I know. And, you know, by, by reading the books, by, 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 by studying, by focusing, by concentrating, that's a, that, that is an essential first step. It's not everything because you have to combine that education within, within action. But the great thing about book learning, the great thing about book learning is it always will stay with you so that even though it may not mean much to you in your 20s, because I was the same way. I read all the books. I, 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 well, I read as much as I could. And I knew what I had to read because I knew what was good. I knew, I knew what, what the centuries had, had, had decreed was, was of value. And you read these, but they don't mean as much to you when you're young. They don't really mean because you haven't been through, the, you haven't been tested fully yet. Life has not really come at you with those daggers and knives that it really means that much to you. But if at least if you've read the stories, if you've read the books, if you've, if you've done the homework, it'll somehow sink in the back of your mind and that you'll be able to piece things together when the arrows do start flying at you. It'll mean more to you. 
And that's why it's so important to read these classics, to read On Duties, to read On Moral Ends, to read Lives of the Great Commanders, to read Sallust, to read these these translations and these you know these essay collections that I that I put. It's important to get these in your mind because even if even if they don't mean much to you now, even if you won't be able to really comprehend a, a lot of the lessons, they'll they'll linger out there in your long term memory, and just like uh, a, a a scent of a certain flower will evoke certain memories. When you encounter problems later in your life, it'll generate memories of what you read and you'll be able to go back to the books and you'll reread them and they'll mean more to you. They'll become more precious to you than you will ever imagine. Okay. So that ties into what I'm trying to to impart to you about the about the learning process, about building this this foundation in your soul, in your will to enhance your willpower. You have to start young. So anyway, my point is, just get, getting back to the point is, you're never going to be fully prepared. You're never going to have a, a sense that you're fully uh, ready for the launching pad. You're always going to start out at some deficit. You're always going to start at some deficit. If you let's again, and I'm not going to tell you whether you should get married or not married to this girl. That's going to be that's going to be for you to decide. Don't ask me to 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 tell you what to do. You have to decide that. You have to decide, do you love her? Do you want a family? Do you want to spend your life with this woman? These are the questions that you have to ask, and only you can answer these questions, not me. But what I can do is I can help give you the tools to enable you to uh, answer those questions, that, to answer that dialogue that you have with yourself, to participate in that dialogue. I can help give you the character tools that you need to enter into that dialogue and to sustain that dialogue. But you have to decide. And you know what? You're never going to know. You're never going to. Do you think if, you know, most of the time when people get, anytime someone uh, uh, enters into a big milestone in life, when, let's let's just say whenever they take on a new job or whenever they buy a new house or whenever they do something that's a major life shift, you never, you're, you're not going to know precisely if it's the right thing to do. Or not. You have to make, you have to make an informed, you, you have to analyze the situation you have to take stock of what your goals are, of where you want to go, what you want to do, and then you have to take the plunge. And you have to have the confidence in yourself that you will handle whatever slings and arrows that life throws at you. But I can tell you one thing. If you're looking to get married and you can't say, you shouldn't even be thinking about that right now. You shouldn't even be thinking you're in a relationship. I'm, you know, as I read through your email, there's all this sort of cogitation that's going on, this thinking, this, this, this mental, uh, mental gymnastics going on. And, you know, if you have to ask all those questions, you're not ready yet. You're not really ready yet to take the plunge. If you have to ask all these questions, you should know, you know, how do you know, you know, when you know. You know when you know. How do you know if you love somebody? You either love somebody or you don't. You either love somebody or you don't. That's it. No one, no one is going to tell you. No one can tell you that. Do you want a family? Do you? The issue is not, does she want a family? Do, do you want a family? You're the one that's going to be the father. You're the one that's going to be paying for it. You're the one that's going to have to be uh, devoting his life to that. What do you want? What do you want? And the truth is, nobody fully knows the answers to these questions. Nobody knows. You're never going to know. You're never going to have a full, a full checklist that you go through and you finally. I mean, so many guys ask. So many guys have this fucking checklist mentality. I don't know how we ever got to this point with a checklist mentality where they think they can just go down through life. Oh, you know, uh, I don't really know how to get motivation. How do I? How do I? It's got to come from you. It's got to come from within you. You have to do the homework. You have to do the homework now. And you do that homework by focusing on the mental element, the physical element, and the spiritual element. The physical element. You should be going to the gym. You should be working out. You should be doing those things you have to do to stay in shape. You don't, I'm not going to outline a workout program for you. You know what you need to do. That's not what I'm here to do. You know what you need to do. Do it. Okay? Getting yourself right mentally. You know what books you need to study. I've written about them. I've talked about them ad nauseum. You can find them, okay? I've translated uh, many of them. You know what they are. You know what you need to do. Go do it or not do it. 
all right? And spiritually, you have to start reflecting. And when I talk about spiritual, really what I'm getting at is, is, is the art of reflection. You should be taking time out to reflect. A real man reflects. A real man reflects on things. He thinks about things. He ponders things. He takes stock in himself. He takes stock in himself. He takes stock in his environment. He evaluates. He ponders. He surveys. He surveys the scene. Sometimes he acts. Sometimes he does not act. Sometimes not acting is the best decision. Sometimes acting is the best decision. How, how are you going to know? I don't know. You're going to have to decide. You're going to have to decide. No one is going to know. No one has a formula. There is no formula. There is no formula. Decide where you want to go. Decide where your goals are and just do the best you can to get there. You'll learn along the way. You've got to develop the confidence in yourself. You've got to develop the character, the fortitude, the iron determination to succeed at all costs. To succeed at all costs. To succeed at all costs. You know, I'm listening to a very good book right now, a good audio book. It's... Um, called The Ghosts of Kannai. Ghosts of Kannai. It's uh, written by, I, I don't know, the, I can't remember the author's name, but it's a book about the Second Punic War with a focus on the Battle of Kannai, which was one of the most devastating and catastrophic defeats in military history. And I'm not going to, this is not the type of podcast here for me to go into detail about that, but suffice it to say that the Romans during the Battle of Kannai suffered upwards of 48,000 to 50,000 in dead. And this was in 216 BC. This was in the ancient world. This was, you know, populations were much lower than they are now. This was a catastrophic disaster. It's difficult for people to even wrap their minds around just how catastrophic this defeat was. It was a dev it was a it was a catas cataclysmic defeat. It was almost the equivalent of the ancient it would almost be like a nuclear a nuclear attack today in today's world. That's how devastating it was. To lose, to lose 50,000 men in one day, that's inconceivable now. I mean, the, during the entire Vietnam War, the casualties were about 50, 55,000 for the Americans. So it was like losing the equivalent of a Vietnam War in one day. And yet the Romans still kept coming. They were so resilient. They were so tough. They were so obstinate, obdurate. They could not be stopped. They could not be stopped. They never even entertained the subject of surrender or terms nobody was better than hannibal on the field but one thing he could not cope with one thing he could not deal with was unrelenting resistance that utter refusal to be defeated and this is what made the romans tough it what it it, it, it it is one of the things that made them what they eventually became which was mistress of the world because they had the organization they had the discipline they had the fanatical willpower to do what needed to be done. To do what needed to be done. No terms, no surrender, nothing. So the point is, you have to develop as an individual the same level of iron determination that no matter what happens in life, and you're going to have challenges no matter what, whether you get married, whether you have a job, a business, you're going to get, you're going to get challenged, you're going to get tested. But you should, you should not look upon these tests or these challenges as things to be feared. You should look upon them as opportunities for growth. You have, as I've said in previous podcasts, you have to say all of these things that I encounter are going to help me be a better man. They're going to help me be better. They're going to help me focus myself, focus my energies. I'm not going to win them all. I'm not going to win them all. You, are, you sure as hell are not going to win them all. You probably are not even going to win half of them. But you're going to win the important things. And most importantly, you will not be able to be stopped. You will not be able to be stopped. And that is the most important thing. That is the most important thing. That fanatical determination. The fanatical determination. And it, it comes by, and relating back to the uh, no choices, it comes back also to not giving yourself ways out. Not giving yourself ways out. 
not giving yourself a way out. Don't get, you shouldn't have too many options. Clam or cod, clam or cod, clam chowder or cod chowder. Spouter in, baby, spouter in. The, think of the, every time you, every time you start to start second guessing and doubting yourself and what do I do and what do I do, I want you to repeat yourself, clam or cod, clam chowder or cod chowder. I know it sounds stupid, maybe it is stupid. Whatever, you get the point. Clam chowder, cod chowder. You have two choices, be a loser or not be a loser. The, the decision is yours. The decision is yours. You know, it's very simple. It's very simple. You shouldn't have too many options. You should have only two options, forward or death. That's it. There are only two options, progress or death, progress or death. That's it. And suddenly, once you, once you reduce life to this equation, to this metric, suddenly things become a lot clearer, don't they? They become a lot clearer. They become a lot clearer. And one last point I'll, uh, before signing off here, one last point I'll make, and this kind of is not directly related to what I was talking about, but sort of related. It's also that I think we get into a rut. I think we have a tendency to get into a rut too much as, uh, as men. We, get into, we, we don't even know the ruts that we're getting into. We get into this rut where we, we go through, the, we do the same workout, we read the same things, we watch the same movies, we listen to the same people, we do the same thing over and over and over again. And, you know, I really believe that this getting into this rut, it has a, a, almost a, a stupefying, a hypnotic effect on us where we're sort of dulled into a feeling of insensitivity to what's going on around us. It prevents us from having that dialogue with self. So don't allow yourself to get into a rut. You know, I, 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 was, I was listening, I was at the gym the other day, I was listening to two other guys talk about, uh, one guy was saying, you know, I, whenever I work out, I read that you should start with the bigger muscle groups and work your way, from, uh, start with the legs and then work to the, the, the bigger muscle groups to the smallest muscle groups, to the arms, and greater overall stimulation will occur if you do that. Okay, fine, that's fine. But I'm th I thought to myself, you know what, maybe that, that if, you, if you do one thing, for the rest of your life, if you do one method, you're going to fall into a rut. Your body is not going to progress. You're not going to be progressing. You have to be progressing all the time. So maybe do that. Do, you know, start with the bigger muscle groups, exercise from the bigger to the smaller, and then sometimes do the opposite. Mix it up. If, you, if you're always doing weightlifting, do some swimming, do some running, do some gymnastics, do different things. You've got, to, you've got to get some variety. If only for psychological benefit, your mind can get so complacent and we don't even know it. I was thinking about this the other day. We, we fall into these ruts. We fall into these, these habits, these routines that hypnotize us and we start making progress. We start making progress. So be aware of that. And when I say ruts, I'm, again, I'm not just talking about working out. I'm talking about reading, read different books, study different things, do different things. I'm talking about consuming visual media or, or, or audio media. Listen to different things. See different things. Uh, be around different people. You need to get different stimuli. You need to vary up the stimuli that is, is being received by your senses. You've got to do it. Try it. Try it for a few weeks. Try it for a few weeks. Get in there and go get them. <laughs>